Again, a lot of times when they're talking, a lot of the stuff that Joe Namath says is true. Yeah. The rides to well, be careful with the rides to and from yeah. doctors. We've not heard good things about people trying to utilize that service. Yeah. It's in your plan if you can get somebody to show up on time when they say they're going to come get you or pick you up. So that's, you know, we have not gotten good. This is not Uber. In other no, words. it's not Uber. Um, and so be careful with that. But that's most of that stuff is true. But some of them, they're, they're, they're mixing in with people for what people who just qualify for medical assistance. Yeah. So be careful. Um, on that, but uh, a lot of that stuff is true on the advantage plans. Um, again, let's talk about we we talked about a lot of the positives. We were getting ready to get into some of the yeah. I, I was going to ask some of the, uh, what your the, concerns the other, are. My concerns are that we're seeing that we saw this year. We saw lots of plans move their maximum out of pocket. Okay, up a uh, double, up to double in some cases what it was in twenty twenty. In 2021, they're going to double it. What the, let, let's explain what that maximum out of pocket means. It represents the most money you could be billed in a calendar year. Okay, now it's not a deductible. This is where people get confused and they think, "Oh my gosh, if I, you mean if I'm hospitalized, I could be billed up to seven thousand? You know, I could be billed seventy five hundred dollars?" No, that's not what it means. Every every when you have a Medicare Advantage plan, when you have an HMO or PPO, every service has a copay attached to it. Some are no cost, like primary care doctor visits. Some are five dollars or ten dollars for blood work. Some are twenty dollars for maybe an X-ray. Uh, Ninety dollars at um, uh, at emergency room. Maybe two hundred twenty-five dollars for an outpatient surgery, and on and on and on. Every time you pay a copay, it counts towards. That max out of pocket. You can either start at zero and add your bills up till it gets to that maximum out of pocket, which run from four thousand dollars on the low end to seventy five hundred and fifty dollars on the high end. Okay, um, so there's only a few ways you can get to that maximum out of pocket. The most likely, probably for most people, would be if you uh, with a cancer diagnosis and you had some chemo and or radiation. Um, chemo is twenty percent of the bill with all Medicare Advantage plans. Um, so, you know, chemo can be $10,000 a pop, so it wouldn't take long to reach that maximum out of pocket. The second most likely way would be to stay at a, in a skilled nursing facility. And skilled nursing facilities, after 20 days, are, it's between 80 and $185 a day. So that would be another way that you could get to that max out of pocket. Um, the third way would be if you had some expensive drugs either infused or injected in a doctor's office. We have lots of clients who get um, Remicade. Uh, infusion therapy and lots of clients who get injections in their eyes for wet macular degeneration and people who need those things they go every four to six weeks and the and and it's 20 percent of the cost and so those people pay four or five hundred dollars every time they get one of those services so that's another way they're going to get there if it, and a, a fourth way you could get there on a lot of plans people weren't paying attention is hospitalizations can be very expensive on non-competitive plans which unfortunately way too many people have right we want our clients in plans that have a per stay copay. In other words, two seventy five, three hundred dollars, three twenty five, three fifty for a stay, whether you're in for one day or a hundred. Well there's still lots of plans out there where it can be anywhere from two hundred to three hundred dollars a day. And so if you had a plan that was two hundred dollars a day for seven days, that's a fourteen hundred dollar hospital stay. If you had four fourteen hundred you know, four seven day stays, which I've met plenty of people who had in a wow. year. That's fifty six hundred dollars in just hospital copays you're going to have. But again, with the plans we put people on, you can't get to that max out of pocket by if you had three hospital stays and two surgeries and two emergency room visits, you you wouldn't get there. Okay, to that seventy five hundred and fifty dollars. But my concern is this, Bill. My concern is down the road that if you know we had we had some uh, quite a few plans, some very popular ones, move to that seventy five hundred and fifty dollar out of pocket. My concern if other companies and other plans follow, is there going to be a time two or three or four years from now where all plans have that seventy five hundred dollar becomes maximum, the standard becomes yeah. the norm yeah. where all companies are going to have a two hundred dollar per day hospitalization. So those are the things we need to think about. You know, it's not necessarily just making a choice of what we're going to do for next year. And this looks so great, but we got to think about. I'm always thinking about you know two, three, four, five, even ten years down the road, especially for those people who are 65, 68. You know, we we need to be thinking about what you're going to be doing when you're when you're 75, 78 years old. Um, the other, it's so so the other concern, really big concern I have is Part D, which is prescription drugs. Right. It continues to get more and more complicated. 
um, as we go along. Preferred pharmacies, tier three drugs, tier four drugs. Drugs cost sometimes are less money without using your without using your insurance plan than it is to use it. Uh, a pill, a, 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 a pill that a, a medication that comes in a pill form can be less than it comes in a capsule form. Uh, they they have drugs that when you know are two drugs that are combined together into one when you take it. It can be a brand name drug, and when you take them separately, they're two generics that cost four dollars each. Right. It's listen. Yeah. It's impossible for the average person to keep track of this. Um, companies are changing drug tiers from tier two to three, tier three to four. Tier, you know, they're taking them off the formulary. Um, you know, they're cheaper at this pharmacy sometimes. They're cheaper at this one other times. It's insane, yeah. um, and. You know, it's especially confusing for people who have to buy what's called standalone prescription drug plans, people who get supplements, you know, which are Medigap policies, right. which are in addition to Medicare, secondary to Medicare, different from the HMOs and PPOs. They have to buy their own prescription plan, and it's even more complicated for those folks, um, it, more complicated than I've ever seen it. But I don't know what happened, but from last year to this, it it's crazy. And, um, and these insurance companies, these Part D insurance companies have figured out the game. And they figured out where they can game the system. They figured out loopholes. They can figure out where they can take advantage of, of, of seniors, and they're doing it. Um, and they know that several seniors are going to not, are either are, are not going to take a look at their prescription plans from one year to the next, or incapable of doing it. And they've taken advantage of that. And it's and, and I'm very disappointed. Um, you know, we do all we can for our clients to make sure they don't they don't you know that we're doing that research and legwork for them. Uh, I just can't imagine how how so many seniors try to do this on their own. It, it's it's very, it's one of my biggest. Part D is one of my biggest concerns uh, as far as uh, Medicare moving forward. Now, which leads to the question: Why does it have to be so complicated? I'm back in when they first proposed Medicare. It was Medicare pays eighty percent, you pay twenty percent. That was it. And now it's Part D and Part A and Part Z and, you know, and uh, your prescription drugs and your supplement. And why is it so complicated? Be uh, I, I, because it because it, it so when when you have the government regulating things and trying to keep up, keep up with free enterprise, right. it, it's you're going to have this mix of, OK, my job is, you know, these guys job is to make money and and for the shareholders. And if that's my job, if you're paying me a yeah. million dollars to do that or you're, you're incentivizing me to make more money and I figured out the loopholes how to do it, I'm going to do it. Well, yeah, I'm you know, fine. That's what you're, and, you're supposed and, to be and, doing. Yeah. And, you know, I don't like it. I think it's awful. Um, I, th you know, I think our government, you know, obviously is terribly inefficient. Um, Part D has not had really any changes, any new regulations. They have not kept up. And that's the thing with the government. I always say – you're never going to outsmart entrepreneurs. No. The government's never going to outsmart them. They're always going to be two or three or four. Or in this case, I think Pardee's 10 steps behind, um, you know, and, and – The drug plans that are available on the open market. There's know. so many of them, and there's, they, they just they – just, they, again, they've, they've figured out what the loopholes are. You know, I know how to work the Obamacare system right. after six years. I know how I can save my clients money. That's my job. And if I find a loophole to do that and it's legal, by all means, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to do that for my sure. client. I'm going to do sure. that for you, Bill. That's what you come to that's me for. Job. That's my yeah. job. Yeah. But I figured it out. And, and so that's, that's part of it. I, I, like you said, Medicare was so simple. 80%, you pay the rest, or you go out and buy a supplement to pay the right. rest. That's simple. Medicare supplements are perfectly regulated, Bill. Mm -hmm. I think they're not over-regulated and they're not under-regulated. And they they were created so they didn't need to be. It's that simple. Yes. Somehow they need to make Part D much simpler, and they need to make it you know so where. This is what drives me nuts about Part D too is why is it that all the big box stores are preferred, right? The preferred so so right. with Part D you have preferred pharmacies and they're all the big box stores. Now here's a problem. Now when you say big box, you're talking the national chains. The national chains. Yeah. The national chains, not big box stores. National chains. Right. I'm not going to mention them. We all know who they are. Yeah. Okay. There's one on every corner. Right. Okay. Why is it that when Part D, Medicare Advantage, is really funded by taxpayers, why are Mon Pa's not allowed to be – why, why aren't they allowed to be competitive? And why, why, why do I have to get a better price by going to 
a chain rather than the mom and pa down the street? Why shouldn't I be able to get the same price from them if it's taxpayer if it's taxpayer subsidized? Why shouldn't mom and pa get to participate in some of that profit? And, and th- th- that's a problem. Um, you know, I think you should be able to go to any drugstore that you want yeah. and get the same price. Or maybe, a, you know, if, if it's a little bit different, maybe a dollar, not 20. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's sad and, and, and it's not fair. And so I, I really think Part D really, really, really needs to be um, uh, revamped. Yeah, just blow it up and start all over. Uh, I, I, that's okay. That's me talking. No, about. I mean, I get what you're coming from. Close to. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you need to go back to the general concept, and we need to just make it easier, like you said. Uh, tier ones. Th- this is one, two, three, four. You know, any pharmacy you want to go to, maybe they have to do the pharmacies have to do something to become accredited and whatever. Right. But don't make it so. Make the standards apply to everybody. Right across the board, man, and yeah. and 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 also some laws. You know, I was talking to somebody today. They said they went to. Um, they were taking albuterol, an inhaler. Right. They said last time she went to pick it up for a 90-day supply, they were told it was going to be $300, okay? Mm. She's turning 65, so I'm doing her Part D. And I look on there, and I say, oh, I, and I know this from experience. I say, well, that butyrol, it's $44 with the Part D plan. Um, and I look, and I say, you know, I know this is not right. I go to GoodRx. It's $69 for a three-month supply. So she would have been – so listen, yeah. the coupon was for the same pharmacy – that told her 40 days ago that it was 300 bucks. She said she went back and forth with them asking them why it was so much and is there any other alternative. They never told her, yeah, go to GoodRx. We can print you up a coupon. You can go on your phone right now, and go to GoodRx, put in albuterol inhaler, and get the same drug that I was just telling you. They never told her that. It should be law that it should pop up. If you can buy that drug less without using insurance, you shouldn't – it should be – that should be transparent. You shouldn't – Try to say get somebody to okay. Well, hey, listen, if they're willing to pay three hundred bucks, let's go ahead and get them. A, well, it's well, like a used car deal. It's <laughs> yeah. like a, it's like a used car. Like your job as a used car salesman is to make it, sell it for as much money over yeah. as much get as much as you can for it over what you paid for it as possible. That's your job as a car salesman. They don't have a very good reputation, right, Bill? There's been no. jokes made about used car salesmen for years and years and years. How has that trickled in? That same type of thing trickled into our our. Uh, to our well, yeah, I mean, healthcare industry. Exactly, because if you buy, uh, if you pay too much for a used car, it's you know, okay, it's not good, you kick yourself, but it doesn't threaten your life. Right. Unless it's a total junker. <laughs> uh, but it doesn't threaten your life. Whereas if you run into a stone wall like this, you might either not take the medicine or. She didn't, she, guess what, Bill? She didn't pick it up. Yeah. That when it was three hundred, she or, didn't pick yeah, it up, and they or cut it in half, or cut it in. And 30. we found yeah. where she could buy it for two hundred and forty-five dollars less, or two hundred thirty-five dollars mm-hmm. less, without using insurance. What is wrong with that picture? Uh, be, everybody should get the same price, and everybody should get the same benefits. Right. And, and, and why should an insurance company pay the overinflated? What? Let's say the insurance company paid three hundred yeah. bucks for that. Why? Why? You would think they would not want to pay the three hundred. You know, there's some stuff going behind the curtain there too. Oh, Bill, yeah, and yeah. and probably some of it's getting rebated back to them. It's just a it's just a smoke and mirror game. Um, you know, I saw today where they were where were part of the um, part of the um, stimulus today was some sort of I don't know what the, the way it read. It sounded like to me it was more they were allowing smoke the smoke and mirrors to continue. Um, that it wasn't in favor of the consumer, it ended up being in favor of the doctors and hospitals. What a shock! Um, you know, and 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 also in the in the pharmacy benefit managers. There's one thing that needs to be changed. You got these middlemen, um, which is a, you know one of the biggest differences between costs of of prescription drugs in the United States between the cost of them in Canada. Is we have something called pharmacy benefit managers. It's right. the middlemen that marks it up. They right. may never even touch the medication. It's not like it comes to their warehouse and yeah. they ship it out. They're just repricing it. And they're getting paid just to reprice the medicine to where it's to where it's headed. Um, someday I'm going to have somebody on the show as a guest who can explain this a little bit better and how this that whole scam works. But you know these are the games that that need to stop. Um, and you know it, your Congress is the one that's got to change it. And unfortunately, who do you think's funding their a lot of their campaigns? 
Gee, I would imagine it's a big pharma. Yeah, probably pretty good. I mean, there's lobbyists and, you know, lobbyists for the insurance industry, too, that doesn't want, you know, and yeah. and, and not just the healthcare industry, hospital industry that doesn't want you to know what a, you know, what a appendectomy costs. Right. Uh, you know, that they charge, that they charge for the person with no insurance one price, the person with Medicare gets charged another price, and the person with private insurance gets charged a third price. Uh, wouldn't it be nice if we just met in the middle and it was all? All the same price. All the same price. The same price. Um, you know, again, a uh, lot of smoke and mirrors, so, you know, that's what needs to be done. And this is why, by the way, you need somebody on your side like the health insurance store because you at least are far more uh, familiar with navigating the maze than the average we person. see it every we see yeah. the trends every year we see what these companies are doing every year we're we're we're, we're, we're we keep up with them trust me we can keep up with them yeah uh, but whereas me i don't <laughs> i can i know how to read a news story i'm not sure i'd be able to uh be able to figure out uh, my health insurance 724-438-4593 we've got about uh Six minutes left if you want to throw a question in, or we'll be doing this again in hour number two as well. And as we uh, move into the end of this hour, uh, if you're a senior right now, and I guess whether you're on Medicare or about to be on Medicare, where, where is the focus right now? Well, the focus has to be on if you're on Medicare currently. You definitely want to make sure that, that you're on the best plan, uh, that, you're, that you're getting the best value for your money. Um, you don't have to be in an enrollment period necessarily to, to be focused on that. Uh, what I want seniors to do is I want I want you to be proactive outside of the enrollment period. You know, outside of enrollment periods that that includes paying attention to your bills. Okay, right. don't just sit back and wait for them to come in. You need to know what your copays are. Right. You need to know what it costs if you go to the hospital if you get a surgery. That way, if you get a bill that doesn't match up with that copay, you know it's wrong. Um, you know, you, I would love to know what the, the amount of erroneous medical bills people pay in, the, in this country, but it's, it's huge. Oh, um, I would imagine. You need to come up with a plan to avoid the donut hole, okay? Uh, that includes seeing if you qualify for PACE or PACENET, talking with your pharmacist and doctor, saying, Doc, I'm on this medication. It's putting me in the donut hole. I'm spending $3,000 a year because it's putting me in the donut hole. What can we do? Go into your doctor armed with what your pharmacist says. My pharmacist says, here are two or three medications that they think might be safe substitutions. What do you think? Ask your doctors for samples. Yeah, they, they usually have a closet full of They them. might, you know, yeah. and they only give them to people who ask for them. Yeah. Um, you're going to look at Canada. What we're going to look at now is we're going to look at what's called uh, prescrip I mean, um, patient assistance programs. They're big right now. They've made some changes in those. Much, many more people qualify for those. These are actually the 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 um, the manufacturers themselves giving away free medication. Obviously, they want to do that as little as possible, but they have opened it up a little bit more um, with the COVID happening. Uh, one thing we're doing at, at the offices, we're we're going to get to this call in just a second. Yeah. Um, I want to get to this. We are going to uh, hire. We are going to um, create a new position called um, a prescription drug caseworker. So anybody who's going to be hitting their donut hole is going to can work with this person individually, and we're going to come up with a game plan, and we're going to work on how to uh, keep from getting into the donut hole, or if we get there, how to how to keep those costs down. Uh, we are we are determined to keep as many people out of the out of the donut holes as, as possible. So that is that is something we're really excited to to create, and hopefully we're going to hire somebody in January. Uh, get them working uh, in February and get get getting with our clients and uh, just again the, the donut hole costs thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Uh, be proactive, be proactive, get smart, know what your benefits are, know what ancillary benefits you're you're entitled to, use them. Um, you know that's what they're counting on. You know the, the, these insurance companies. You know that the, the guy that with the commercial with the duck. Yeah. That you know what they're counting on people not making claims. Right. They're counting on people having these policies and not making claims. Yeah, not realizing that oh, this my car. I'm I'm making this up, but like my car payment is taken care of or something like you know extra. They they don't know the details. Right. So you know they buy this policy that if they get cancer they get a check, but they don't actually ever submit the claim. Yeah. Well, you, if you have this, if you have this dental benefit, if you have this over the counter benefit, use it. Order that stuff. You know, um, you, you know, make sure you're getting your teeth cleaned and your and and if you have a, you know, make sure you're using that stuff. Yeah, it Go doesn't get, carry to next year. No, it does not. Go get your glasses. So you got to have to know the plan that you're on. You got to look at that book that they send you. Um, you know, it's it's so important. 
You also get a statement every month from your insurance, from your uh, your Pres- uh, prescription right, people. Telling you how close you are to your donor. Right, role. and uh, how much they paid, how much you paid, how right. much. And that, I'm sure there are more confusing things in the world, maybe uh, deeds to houses. But I, I would imagine most people cannot figure out what that thing is all about. Now, I mean, the only thing is there's a pie chart on there that tells you what, you know, and, and, the, yeah. and the fuller that, you know, the f- more ink that's in that round yeah. pie, the closer you're getting to your to your donut hole. And that I guess that's a nice thing about it. But, um, you know, again, we need to we need to figure out how to keep that pie from getting full, you know, from getting full. Yeah. That's where this prescription or drug case is. the pie to go in. away. Yeah, go away. You know, get the get rid of the donut hole. Uh, seven two four four three eight four five nine three. We'll be taking calls in the next hour. Also, if you would like to talk to Aaron at the health insurance store, seven two four six zero three three four zero three, or online at getyourbestplan.com. dot com. If you have a question about your current policies, if you are looking to get health insurance coverage for employees. Uh, also, uh, if you are coming up on 65 and it's time to start thinking about getting on Medicare, uh, by the way, when should they call you? How far away from your 65th birthday should you be called? You, you can call like 90 days before um, we, we, we can see you or disc- talk with you 90 days before the first day of the month you turn 65. So, for example, if you turn 65 in April, um, your Medicare is going to, you know, April 25th, your yeah. Medicare is actually going to start April 1st. Yeah. So, um, so March, February, February yeah. January. So January, we could meet you anytime in January. You can actually apply up to 90 days before the first day of the month yeah. where you turn 65. Do you still, by the way, have to go into the office and talk to somebody? No, you know? Well, we're not seeing until, until we, this COVID thing goes down, we are actually not meeting people in person. We are doing mm-hmm. everything over the phone or via Zoom meetings uh, for the time being. Um, boy, we can't wait because we don't like that. We like to sit with people. I like to meet people. I want people to see where they're doing business. And but unfortunately, right now we're just that's just the way it's got to be done. Um, hopefully that'll end soon. Um, we're hoping as soon as in the spring as possible. Yeah. Um, but you can call us and we'll set that appointment up for you. And 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 you know, ninety days before that. Very good. And also, the Medicare offices aren't taking people in person. So either, security so. is not either. Yeah. So uh, we'll be back with hour number two of Medicare A to Z with Aaron Zolbrod of the Health Insurance Store on your local station, W266DB, WMBS, Union Town. Your local station, WMBS, it's hour two of Medicare A to Z with Aaron Zolbrod of the Health Insurance Store. And you can reach him at the Health Insurance Store at 724-603-3403 or online at getyourbestplan.com. And you can also... Give Aaron a call today here on the show, 724-438-4593, if you have a a question about health insurance or Medicare. And we were talking about, um, as we wrapped up the last hour, talking about 2020, you know, things have, uh, deadlines have passed, things have happened. Let us talk about the people who either didn't know the deadline was coming up for Medicare and or made a choice and they're now not happy with it or they didn't make a choice and they stayed with what they have. Are they basically out of luck or what? Um, simple answer, no. Um, I can't get too much into it um, due to some regu- you know due to some regulatory stuff. Um, what I will say is if you know you, made a change and you are leery about it or unhappy with it or feel like you might have, you know, again, made a mistake. If you think you made a mistake by not changing plans, um, just give us a call. Let's talk about it. If you can actually, if you're stuck there or not. Um, I just want to say, don't assume you can't. There are some what's called special election periods where people can change. There are, there, there, there are definitely some things. I don't want anybody to think that they're, they're necessarily stuck. Call us and let us get into that with you. I will say most people aren't. Um, so if you made a mistake, if you and, and I think a lot of people, Bill, made a mistake by not changing. Um, you know, again, there's still one company in particular that people hold on to and hold on to and hold on to, and they've been loyal to a brand that hasn't been loyal to them. At least this would be the one that jacked up the uh, the deductible. The out. The no, out of not, no, not, okay. no, 
that's not the the one I'm speaking of. Okay. This is this is a you know this is one of the the more popular companies that um, you know has been around forever, and um, has increased premiums over ten years. You know as much as five hundred percent. Wow. And they're just not competitive as far as premiums, as far as um, copays for hospitalizations, and not offering you know two of their the, the two of their most popular offerings are not giving people the cost comprehensive dental and the um, over-the-counter allowances that the other two companies are. And so basically most people are paying more, having higher hospital copays, not getting the very valuable comprehensive dental and the, and the over-the-counter benefits. Um, if you're one of those people who's just never changed because you're afraid just because you've had them forever. I'm going to tell you again, I've said this a hundred yeah. times in the show, how long you've had the card with the same logo on it means absolutely nothing in terms of what the value of the plan is in terms of what the cost and what your benefits are. You will not pay $20,000 more out of pocket if you have a heart, you know, if you needed a, uh, you know, a, a bypass surgery with one company or another when it comes to advantage plans or supplements. They're all regulated. And so, you know, none of them can bill you more than what the out-of-pocket maximum is for a Medicare covered service. And so the, the thought process of these people who've had a plan since, you know, their husband worked in the mill back in 19, you know, 68, and they've had that same card and that same logo is that, oh my gosh, what happens if I were, you know, to get cancer? I, I'm just afraid that, you know, another company, if I changed, I'd, I'd have to pay 30, 40,000. It just doesn't work like that. It, it, but, I, and I understand the fear it's just unfounded. So if you're one of those people and you, you've hung on and, you know, and a after I get done with those people, a lot of times Bill and I say, I can't believe I've waited this long to do this. I can't believe I've paid, you know, I've been overpaying this long when they finally figure out that, that it, it hits them when I, when they finally overcome that fear, when they see it again on side by side on paper and they make that change. I mean, I had a lady who fretted yeah. over it for, for fretted over it from the, almost the day one of a, of enrollment period to to the end of the, to the last day, and she was 83 years old. She literally had had that company for for like 40 years, um, and and it took her it took her literally like 45 days to finally change. And when it when when it's all done and said and done, she's you know, gosh, I should have done this years ago. So again, if you you're not necessarily stuck, just give us a call, okay? Yeah, and again, that's a seven two four six zero three three four zero three. For the health insurance store in Connellsville, and you brought this up before, uh, you are still going by the uh, COVID-19 uh, restrictions uh, from the state health and from the CDC about you know setting up meetings and Zoom meetings and things like that. Yeah, and I got to tell you, we did, we we and I don't, I don't think we're mandated to do that. Actually, um, right before Thanksgiving, when it really the, the you know there was tons of cases, we just said, you know, when we come back from Thanksgiving, we're going to go all. We're going to go all remote. And I'm going to tell you something, Bill. I'm glad we did because after we did that, we talked to about 15 clients who were yeah. scheduled to come into the office right. and meet with us face-to-face -face that we talked to that had COVID. Okay. So uh, it was – it's out there, guy. I, I just listen. It's out there. Be care. I just everybody be careful. Yeah. Better safe than sorry. Yeah, you know, I've always said just yeah. Don't be silly. Don't be stupid. Just you know, wear a mask. You know, if you want. If you don't want to. I, you know, I'm one of those people. I think it's horrible that I, I feel so bad for restaurants having to be closed, and you walk into Walmart, and people are shoulder to shoulder and <laughs> squeezing around each other in aisles, and the and the workers are, you know. Well, you you have to get that bargain on the Nerf uh, rifle. Right I, I, I just I, I just feel bad if those if that can be open. I'm just I don't understand, and and I know we're digressing here. I just I really feel for restaurant workers yeah. and and waitresses and waiters and. Um, you know, those people who are really taking a, you know, a, 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 a tremendous pay cut. You know, I, I'm so sorry for those folks. I, I, I certainly hope that, that something comes. Uh, hopefully this changes and, and, and we can get those folks back to work. Yeah, so, sooner rather than yeah. later. 724-438-4593. If you have a question for Aaron uh, here on the Medicare A to Z program. And uh, we have been talking about Medicare Again, the uh, election period is is over, but you know there are other period election periods and other deadlines coming up for people who aren't on Medicare. Yeah, so you know normally this the the period for the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, whatever you want to call it, that open enrollment would have ended December fifteenth, but um, it's not, and and one of the reasons is the penny. 
because the move to Penny, I, they, they wanted people to have some extra time. And so um, that doesn't end until January 15th. So we have until January 15th to enroll yourself in Obamacare. So if you didn't enroll yet and you missed a de- you thought you missed a deadline, you haven't, um, you can still enroll. You can still change plans, which we're going to talk about here shortly. Um, so, and again, we have till January 15th to enroll in a in, in an Obamacare Affordable Care Act, um, get a subsidy and get insurance. Um, today's the last day you can enroll and get a January 1st effective date, but we have until January 15th. Anybody who applies tomorrow to January 15th will get a February 1st effective date. So, and you can uh, and call Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, you know your way around around the, the penny. Has penny worked out the way that they uh, they they thought? It I would? can't believe how good it's worked. Good. I I was so, you, and you know, Bill. I was so skeptical. I've been skeptical for a year. Yeah. Um, we had a couple. We've had a couple days where we had a glitch or two. Um, but I got to tell you, it is so much easier to use for the brokers, um, uh, than the marketplace. Um, we don't need these crazy passwords and usernames and, and all this stuff. We can it's kind of it's very easy to go in and uh, create an account, create an, uh, an account and apply for other people and access that account. It's so much easier. Um, we're we're very 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 pleased. I mean, there still could you know they still can do a couple things to um, make it a bit more user friendly, but overall. We are we are very pleased. The people at the market, the people at the state based exchange have been some, somewhat helpful. Uh, the whole times are less. It seems like um, the people are pretty friendly. Um, I found the overall experience to be yeah. ten thousand times better than our initial experience. I, a million times better than our oh, initial yeah. experience with the federal marketplace. I have to be the one. I'm, I, I'll admit when I was wrong, I was I was completely skeptical. I thought it was going to be a train wreck. It's been far from it. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. And whoever uh, ran the whole program and got this thing going, uh, um, uh, applause to them um, for making it pretty seamless. And let's be honest that they did not have a great track record, if you remember, uh, the train wreck that the original – uh, Obamacare rollout. It was uh, horrible. Yeah. Oh. But, I mean, so the people in Pennsylvania don't know who's in charge of it, but, they, but bravo. Yeah. So, and uh, you're getting a lot of people who are getting help. Are we going to see some of the issues uh, with Penny? Like, um, every year we have to look at our plan, or uh, have we gotten any indication this is how it's going to be? So, we had some really, something really strange happen this year, and again, we just don't get enough information early enough, you know, from from the companies, from the marketplace. We had something very strange happen. For many people, the gold plans, which are better plans, are less expensive than the silver plans. Higher deductibles, higher out-of-pocket costs, higher premiums, or not higher copays, right. higher premiums. Right. So those of you who had, have had silver plans in the past are Look probably going to be better off on the gold plans. They're less expensive with much better benefits. And so it's really odd. Um, I believe it's because the silver plans are the ones that people who make under 250% of the poverty level, they also get what's called cost-sharing reductions, right. which is a reduction on their 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 copays and their deductibles. And those those are people are utilizing those plans more. And I guess that's why they were – there were some ways that they, – they, they had to my the explanation that was given to me was that the state made them change the way they raised or reduced premiums so they actually had to raise them on it it just doesn't put it this way i'm not going to try to get into it it doesn't it, common sense says a plan with lower higher deductibles and higher copay shouldn't cost more yeah. but yeah. that's where we're at so if you have a silver plan even if you're not a client of ours or if you are you want to call us and we want to take a look at this before January 15th because we can make the change from the silver to the gold and get you a better plan for less money. Right. Um, overall, for once, premiums did go down slightly overall. It's the first year we haven't had you know pretty big increases. Um, I will tell you, prices are still st- ridiculously, outrageously high for those who don't get premium subsidies. Outrageously high. So that hasn't changed. They've gone down a few dollars. 
Uh, you know, for a 60 year old, the gold plan, I think I had somebody the other day, went down, th- you know, from 840 to 810. $810 to pay for a plan, mediocre health plan, is insanity, shouldn't be. This country needs to do something about that. For somebody to pay 10000 for one human being to pay $10,000 for health insurance, and still be have the possibility of getting billed seven thousand dollars in a calendar year should not happen. Um, you know, uh, it works great for people who make probably three hundred percent of the poverty under the poverty level. It works excellent for people who make under two hundred percent of the poverty level. But for the rest of us, it's not working real well. Something's got to get done. Unfortunately, we get so caught. You know, my opinion is we get so caught up in so many other things that you know. This gets pushed under the rug, you know. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm glad that Trump distraction. I hope is going to be finally over, so maybe people can focus on some stuff that, you know, you know, instead of you know what comes out of that man's mouth and how he speaks and whether he's a misogynist or a racist, we can stop that debate and we can move on to some 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 things that affect millions and millions of people, like the ridiculous cost of, of medications and how the Affordable Care Act. Uh, was an absolute disaster for the middle class, and uh, we can get, get you know. Here is the thing: a single person who makes over fifty one thousand dollars and a married couple who makes sixty nine thousand do not get any subsidy. Yeah, and um, so they're 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 paying and, and, full and, vote, paying full and, ticket. And, and so you know, I just had a, a, a they're forty nine year old married couple with one child, Bill. Mm. So they're forty nine years old. They have one child. Okay, they're paying twelve hundred dollars a month for health insurance. That's fifteen thousand dollars a year. You talk about a you talk about uh, uh, you talk about money disappearing into a black hole. Yeah, but you can't not have and it. You, but you yeah. can't not have it. But you know, you can't not have it. But just think if these people could have got it for half that price. Right. Exactly. Okay. Which it was pre Obamacare. If if they could pass medical underwriting, actually it would have been um, a third of that price uh, in two thousand fourteen. Now again. The problem with that was there were some people who couldn't get it because they couldn't pass medical underwriting. Right. But somehow we got to find a happy medium here. And I'm not ever advocating to go back to a p- period where you can be denied for health insurance due to pre-existing conditions. But there's got to be a way we can have a happy medium where uh, we can we can cover pre-existing conditions and not deny people based on that, but not be at this 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 situation where where uh, uh, you know where middle class people. And I'm sorry. I, I know some people may not think seventy thousand dollars for a married couple is middle class, but you know if you've got a kid in college, oh. and you've got two, you know you've got a car payment and a you know nine hundred dollar mortgage payment, and you may be paying some student loans uh, for your for your child or or and you know that is a ton, ton, ton of money to be spent on health insurance. Well, look at it this way: if you're making seventy thousand after taxes, you're probably bringing in fifty thousand, if not less. Right. Uh, and if you're paying twelve thousand dollars a year, it's, it's, that's a quarter of your. Uh, or close imagine to a what the economy could do if we could figure this out too. Yeah, because they, yeah, they, they'd be buying TVs and new cars. Exactly. So I mean, like you know, all the stimulus package and all this stuff. You'd think we could maybe work this out to where maybe you know they could give a break to some of these people. We're talking about paying off student loans uh, for people. You know, at least they had some control whether they went to college or not. Just like you said, Bill, we have yeah. to have the insurance. Yeah. You don't have to go to college. Right. Okay. You don't have to pay $50,000 a year to go to college. And we're talking about, you know, bailing those people out. Man, we got to start figuring out how to bail out the middle class here a little bit and helping them out. And one way is let's come up with something. We got to be, there's got to be, I know it can be done. It's just, it's a matter of where, where is our focus going to be in 2021? You know, our focus has been pulled with the COVID and with, with the distractions of, of, of Trump yeah, and do you, do you like him or do you not like him or do you, you know, we're all arguing about, you know, and the defund, the, you know, the defund police arguments. And gosh, we need, let's focus on, on, on stuff that's going to help millions upon millions of people. Right. Uh, let's focus on getting our drug costs down and, 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 and getting these health care costs down. It's so important. Now, um, one of the issues that we had with Obamacare, and it may carry over into uh, Penny, is that uh, with Obamacare, generally most companies would not enter the market, and you you had didn't have a lot of competition between companies. Uh, still that way. Still that way. So. There's only two companies in them on. There's only two companies in, in only only one that's competitive in Fayette County, Westmoreland and Fayette County, um, and so we don't have any choices. Um, 
you know, they're they're I, I want to I want people to be very, very, very um, aware of, of something that that really concerns me is when it comes to buying major medical health insurance. OK, major medical health insurance is medical ins- is, is health insurance that limits the money you can be billed in a calendar year. OK, so even a catastrophic plan right now can limit you to um say seventy five hundred dollars in bills out of your pocket for the calendar year. So that sounds like a ton of money and it is. But if you had a hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of chemo, which is not No, that's very easily done. Easily done. Yeah. You would pay seventy five hundred dollars and the insurance company would be on the hook for the arrest. Okay? Um if you you know, so if you had a you know, quintuple bypass surgery and then you, and, 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 you know, complications from that surgery and, you know, $7,500 is where it stops. Okay. Yeah. You, I mean, you could end infection and then end up with long. So there's only two companies that do this. And I'm allowed to say these companies on the air when it comes to individual plans, it's UPMC and Highmark. So there are other companies who are selling plans, but they're not major medical health insurance. Okay. They're called indemnity plans. And if you get solicited, or if you are researching any company that is not Highmark or not UPMC, you are not buying major medical health insurance. I won't sell them, okay, because they don't put a cap on how much you can be billed. And the people that sell these to you are generally going to be selling to you them to you over the phone. There are a ton of companies that sell. They had a guy call me the other day. What did he say? It was called Chubb? <laughs> he, he said it was called Chubb. It was... Something through Chubb, and it, he, he named another company, Cardinal Health or something crazy like that. And I said, that's not health insurance, man. No. If you get cancer, that thing's going to be worthless to you. So I've seen some of these policies, and I had a guy one time, he, he came in, probably the best salesman I ever met in my life. He <laughs> came into the office, and he showed us a video, and he showed us this, you know, about these two doctors in Oklahoma City who, who were running a, a – a, a, um, a surgical center and they didn't take any insurance and they were charging cash for right. surgeries and man it made se- you know what he was yeah. telling us made sense in that one little section of the country where people were getting carpal tunnel surgeries and and um you know other outpatient surgeries and they were paying cash and it was 2500 bucks and you know the the hospital down the street who took insurance was it was $7800 for that same carpal tunnel surgery and it you know and he, it, it all sounded wonderful and 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 that you have a menu and you choose, okay, I want $250,000 worth of coverage. I want this deductible and this level of this and this level of that. And I'm looking at this thing and I was like, wow, he made it sound so good. And then I was I was dating a girl who, who had a back surgery right before we were getting ready to look at these things seriously. And we, we thought we might start selling them. She had a back surgery that went bad. Oh. So she's in such pain that we had to go to the emergency room once and they couldn't get her into surgery. But she was in such pain, they kept her in observation, which is in between. Right. And you weren't admitted, but you weren't in the emergency room either for three days before they could finally get her in surgery. She has a surgery. It doesn't go well. She mm-hmm. wakes up, and it's worse than it was before. So they keep her in the hospital another three days. They scans and doctors and this and that and the other. All together, we're in there for six or six, six days, something like that. And I'm thinking, I'm looking, and, then, and I'm looking on this, this, this benefit, and there was no definition of what what happens if there's complications or if you're in observation or if you, you know and i'm thinking what in god's green earth would she paid with this insurance plan with that happening and then i look into it further and it says that chemo's paid at $1500 per chemo well, we just talked about chemo okay. 10 where, to 50 yeah where can you get 15 I'm, and i'm sure that the lowest dose probably if you had a really you know a low dose chemo or or however the cocktail they put together was a lower dose of it and and you know it was probably based on that that it would only cover fifteen hundred dollars so you know these people are going to come at you and say this is a low cost alternative to obamacare or the aca well it's low cost for a reason yeah they also were paying this is where i really threw up red flags me 35 percent commissions yeah so if i sell a thousand dollar policy they're paying me not three hundred fifty dollars yeah. for the month for the year. They're paying me three hundred fifty a month. Yeah. So if I sell a if I sell a thousand dollar policy to a family of four, 
which could be less, which would could be four or five or six hundred dollars less than Obamacare. Yeah. I'm going to make four thousand bucks. The only way they can afford to pay me thirty five percent commission is if they're not paying out. I was going to say other expenses. They're not are, paying out yeah. very many claims. And so, um, again, folks, I'm going to tell you, if it's not UPMC and if it's not Highmark, right. it's not major medical insurance. And if you end up with cancer or if you have a complications from a surgery or if you have a really bad accident, it's very likely you could be bankrupt anyways. So I, I've told people, listen, I'd rather have you take that money and put it in the bank right. than buy this health insurance that's going to be no good if in case you have a heart attack or you end up in ICU or you need chemotherapy because you don't your insurance is not covering it anyways. And so, again, please be careful. I've been approached to sell these things. I won't do it. Um, I, I just couldn't sell something that I couldn't guarantee what's going to happen if you, if, if my client got cancer or had a horrific, I just, I couldn't do it. And it, we just decided, uh, we weren't going to do it. And I'm so happy that we made that decision. Um, so again, be careful. 724-438-4593. If you would like to talk to us here on Medicare A to Z and we go to the phones. Hi, you're on with Aaron Zolbrod. Who are we speaking with? Yeah, this is Michael. Good afternoon. Hey, Michael. Hey, I've got some uh, real-life uh, horror stories to tell you. Let's um, hear them. Uh, the one actually uh, was verified Friday. I belong to a Legion Post up in the North Hills near in Allison Park. We had nine of our Post members that signed up. Can I mention the plan? You can. United Healthcare, the, Medi- the ARP Medicare Advantage Patriot plan, and basically they all went for it. Because they 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 like the forty dollar you know rebate if you will from their Medicare Part B premium, but guess what happened? They got kicked out of pace. They got knocked out of pace. And then here's the other war story from Pace. Pace has you know Pace will accept you know or PaceNet any you know Medicare Part D plan from any insurer, but they have three preferred contracts with Silver Script Choice and two other companies. So, anyways, three legionnaires and their spouses. Uh, were already in plans that you enrolled them in. They were then told by Pace that they were they were in the. Can I mention it? They were in the yeah. Aetna uh-huh. Avantra Eagle plan again with the forty. You know, basically the people on Pace and PaceNet. And guess what they did? They were told by Pace that they could still enroll in a Part D plan. Uh, Why should they do that in case they were ever going out of state? And then it threw them off the Advantage plan. That threw them completely off the Advantage plan. And you know what? These people are all in their 80s, and they came over here literally in tears, crying, mm. because, you know, one day they get a letter saying, congratulations, Medicare has informed us you've been accepted. The next right. day they get a letter saying, Medicare has told you you've canceled your enrollment in the Aetna Medicare uh. Advantage Legal Plan. And so the reason why I'm telling you this, Aaron, these folks – Literally, we're shaking. They say, oh, my God, I have no insurance. I have no insurance. I, yeah, you do. You still have original medicine. Right, right. But, but, the thing, but the thing is, Aaron, I'm telling you, I'm looking at this letter that Health, United Healthcare sent out with the permission of Legion, choose a Medicare plan designed to serve American Legion members, and they really got snowballed here. Uh, the other thing I want to tell you is so critical, so critical. So how did, they I, get, how did, how did United Healthcare get the list of the Legion members? Well, you know, the, the, the Legion will do anything for money. <laughs> oh, gosh. So they sold it. They sold they the sold list the of list. their members. Yeah, they sold the list. Oh, my gosh. And I then, mean, and then get, these people get, are getting their, their – get, you know, again, and that's the problem we talked about at the beginning of the show, Michael. These commercials give you a quarter of the – a tenth of the truth or a tenth of – maybe I shouldn't say a tenth of the truth. They give you a tenth of the story, right? And I'll tell you, and I'll tell you, and I'll tell you what else scares the bejeebers out of them. Again, they should keep their eye on the ball, which is that move, max them out of pocket, mm-hmm. because what really got them so scared is when they saw that Highmark and um, who else, Aetna, uh, their, their co-pays for days um, 21 through 100 or mm-hmm. $184 a day. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. said, look, even if you have a bad health, your, your max out of pocket is $4,000 for right. that Aetna plan, period. Right. Right. All right. Right. Now, let me tell you the most important reason why I'm telling you this phone call, because it's, it's critical. Um, and just to show you, again, the lack of understanding for people who don't really drill down and flatten out their learning curve. Our post commander is a retired Air Force full colonel and a retired high school principal. And he said, what does DNR mean? He said, we just had three of our members die in the nursing home up here. I said, if you don't have a living will, 
Guess what they're doing in Allegheny County? You go in the emergency room. They're treating you as do not resuscitate. You must have a living will in your pocket. You see what I'm saying? Uh, you know, the, 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 it's, it's an information crisis, and it's sad that, again, we talked about a regulation. I'm not a huge government regulation guy, but when, when you're sending 80-year-olds a letter – and you're not giving, you're not, not explaining everything. Yeah, you're, fo- you know, technically they're following the law, but they're not, it, it, <laughs> you know. It, well, the reason why I'm telling you this, I told, I told four of these, I said, you call Aaron and Sadie, Sadie back, and I said, you know, you, they'll fix the problem for you. Right. I said, this is why I'm telling you right now, you need someone locally to hold your hand throughout the year so that you don't have a daggone heart attack or stroke when you get these series of letters like, you're in, you're out, you're in, you're out. Right. You know? And they're losing their mind. Right. But the most important thing I'm telling you is, number one, I said, these folks don't realize what a, what a benefit you guys are and Thanks, a blessing Michael. to have us locally. And number two, I can't emphasize them enough that even if they're, even if they're the poorest of the poor, they could still have the area on aging prepare a will and a living will for yeah. them. They must have that done. And power of attorney, too, for married couples. I, I know, but yeah. right now, but I, I kid you not, if you go in the ER... And if you don't, if you don't have it on record, I don't care if your uh, your your PCP has it. You must give that emergency room uh, your living will, or else, guess what? They won't resuscitate wow. you. They'll treat you as do not resuscitate. That's good information. Yep. All That's right, good. Michael. Go. Thank you so much for br- always bringing these kind of things to light for us, and it just really just. Well, we're trying. We're trying. We're trying. We're trying to. We're trying to ratchet down the emotions. We're trying to get them good information. But I'm telling you right here, remember I told you a month ago the second biggest lie the world was, I, we work for the government, I'm here to help you? No, I'm going to change that. I work for a Medicare Advantage plan, I'm here. That's the second. I mean, these <laughs> people, some of these people are just not competent at all. I mean, I'm not talking about your place. I'm talking about the customer service piece of these companies. Well, and you're talking about the advertisements. It's just completely, it's just completely awful. I mean, again. It, 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 it borders on false and misleading. Oh, absolutely. I mean, free this, free that, free this, free that. Okay, can you tell us, I mean, for every time you say free this, it should be. Okay, but if you end up in the hospital for six days, it's eighteen hundred dollars. Well, you know, you know, I tell you, I tell you what, they should be held to the same standard that uh, the the attorneys are. I mean, that's false and misleading, and you can have your your license absolutely suspended. You know, absolutely. You know, it's crazy though, Michael. They they have to send those commercials into CMS, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid, to be approved. Well, let me let, before uh, they let can run them, something. and it blows my mind that they're, yeah, they're being me, approved. Yeah, but let me tell you something. The first person I called at Medicare, when I called at you know oh dark thirty four o'clock in the morning, so there was no waiting line. All right, right. The first woman, she didn't even know that you couldn't merge a Medicare Advantage plan with a it's, Medicare Part D prescription plan. I finally said, "Is there a supervisor right. around I could talk to?" Now this guy was knowledgeable. He'd been there 11 years. He says, he goes, you know what? I'm so glad we had this conversation because the woman that got bounced because she got enrolled in that Silver Choice Part D plan. Yeah. You know, he goes, he goes, I'm glad you called because, you know, she was disenrolled from her Medicare Advantage plan. So, again, I got to tell you, two years ago before I got involved helping people out in my situation, I didn't know, I didn't know you know, crap from Shinola myself, you know? Right. So it's not an easy boat. It's not an easy boat. It's not an easy process. If it was easy, I wouldn't be in business. Correct. <laughs> I, I mean, honestly, I, I, it, it's it's true. It, it, the minute it becomes no, it's absolutely less, true. And you know what? Honestly, God, Michael, I hope that happens someday. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I hope we can make it that simple. Now, again, I I, I don't know that you'll ever get there um, because I'm not for the government, you know, a gov- total co- government control either. So well, it's, me, it's a me, fine t- line. Let me, t- let me tell you why you're going to be in business. I don't know if you saw 60 Minutes about a month ago where they were now looking at these people. They were looking at their. They put them on, you know, dementia drugs and whatnot, and obviously you can't tell if that stuff's working along with the excellent patch until they die and they do, a, you know, an autopsy of the brain. And guess what they now know? They now know that anyone born today, guess how they, long they could, guess what their life expectancy could be? 104 years old. Wow. So you're going to be in business a long time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. You know, okay. I, uh, thanks, Michael. Great phone call. Bye-bye. Thank you, Mike. Have a happy Christmas. And, you know, we, we started the show pretty much, Bill, talking about today, why is it got to be so complicated? Yeah. So when I got in this business 13 years ago, you know, I, and I've always listened to people. I, I, I've listened and learned, and that's, that's kind of how I got good at this business is just listening to people and learning. And um, I'll never forget the guy said, where there's confusion, there's profit. Yeah. Where there's confusion, there's profit. So why is it, why is it so confusing? It's the way they want it, man. Because somebody, somebody's going to make a dime off of it. I, it's... I, I got to tell you, we love su- we we love supplements because of the simplicity of it. I think they're regulated perfectly. All companies have to offer the same benefits. 
When we compare policies, there's only nine policies you can buy. When we compare them, the benefit is identical, exactly the same. The only thing we have to worry about is cost. I would love to see Medicare Advantage plans. You can only have three options. There's a low, mid, there's a low medium, and high. They, the, 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 the low can be, no, you know, everybody's got to do a zero premium plan. Your mid can be no more than 50. Your high can be no more than 100. Um, and let's make it simple to compare these things. Uh, let's stop having one company that can have 40 different plans, different plans in different counties, county-specific plans that are named after a county, named after a hospital, um, you know, with different co-pays, but this within the same company, uh, you know, it's just Michael said it. You know that they can send out letters that the, you know that the that the American Legion would sell out veterans, it's or a mailing why, list on the phone. a mailing list that they can so to to sell it out to an insurance company that's going to send out miss. You know they're legal. It's not illegal. No, that doesn't make it right. That doesn't make it ethical. And you know all these things disappoint me. I guess you know Michael said it. Let, let's. I'm going to say it. Listen, you want to avoid become a client of ours. We're going to advocate for you. We're going to fight for you. We're going to make sure this stuff doesn't happen to you. We tell our clients all the time, and these are people that we enrolled. Don't do that stuff before you call us. This goes for anybody out there. You're not a client of ours. It's okay. Call us. Hey, I got this letter in the mail. What do you think? I'm getting ready to sign up for this plan. Is it okay? We'll tell you. We'll tell you if it's okay or not. Uh, we've been here going to be 13 years in April. We pride ourselves in educating this area. You know, we're proud to do it in Fayette, Westmoreland, you know, Somerset, Washington counties. We've got clients from all of those, Allegheny. We want to help our seniors. Um, you know, we didn't mention it today in the opening. We don't charge for our services. If you're not a client, you call and ask for our advice. We're going to give it to you. You're not going to get charged for it. We're going to try to guide. We're going to put you in the right direction. We'll help you as much as we can. Um, our clients, uh, you know, you guys know how what, what type of service you get from us. Um, we're going to continue to do that. We're going to expand operations. We're going to, you know, like I said, we're going to, we're going to, we created, an, I've created a new position. We're going to hire very soon for a, for a prescription drug um, caseworker, as we're going to call it. And we're going to, we're going to, we're going to make sure that, that we keep as much money in our clients' pockets and our seniors' pockets as we can because our seniors are the one, the people, Bill, their, their, their income's not going up yeah. to match inflation. Okay. We can't go out and get a, you know, we can't shop and go out and see if Social Security is going to give us a – which Social Security agency is going to give me more money. We can't do that. You know, I can shop for a new employer who's going to pay me more money and see if I can find somebody that's willing to pay me more money for the same job. That doesn't happen with seniors. And we can't control, you know, the price of gasoline and heating oil and electricity and, and milk. And, uh, you know, it, 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 when inflation happens, our Social Security checks don't go up to, to, to follow that. Our pensions don't increase. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the – when the price of eggs uh, doubles, it doesn't. Uh, you, you don't. We see got a one point three one point three percent increase in Social Security. Okay, uh -huh. that's thirteen dollars a month for somebody who makes a thousand. It's twenty six for those who make two thousand in Social Security. Very few people get that. And then your Medicare Part B premium went up three bucks. I was going to say, yeah. Then the Medicare right. premium takes care of that. Seven two four four three eight four five nine three. We got about ten minutes left, so still can take a call. We go to the phones. Hi, you're on. Medicare A to Z with Aaron Zobrod. Who are we speaking with? Jimmy, there's snow on the roof, but there's one hell of a fire in the furnace. Yeah. What's, what is on your mind, Jenny? Well, that's, I think that was uh, pretty much the extent of what she wanted to say. 724-438-4593. Uh, we touched on the indemnity plans, I can assume... Uh, you don't recommend them. Now, we hear about these, and I know we've talked about these before, these plans you hear on the radio where uh, more often than not it's faith-based, and they they say, I only pay X amount, I've and never, they paid for everything. You know, Bill, until we find somebody who's who's got cancer and tells me that was it paid for 120, you know, had a 50 or or $100,000 worth of chemo and it covered it, I'm, I'm, I've never... I've not met somebody who had – I've never met – I've had a couple clients who took them, yeah. but I've not had a client who took them and had to make a, a major claim. I don't mm -hmm. know. I'm not going to take a chance. And, you know, um, I, I wish there were some alternatives. There's none I'm going to be comfortable selling. I, I, if anybody's ever been out there and knows somebody who's had one of those, MediShare, um, faith-based type insurance companies and, and has gotten sick and has been covered or not covered, we want to know about it. 
um, you know, please share your share your thoughts with us. Yeah. But and again, the ads are slick and they make it sound like it's really good. So uh, it's, yeah, always saying again. Stu- don't just make a rash decision. Study everything. I'm going to repeat. Aaron. Right. I'm going to repeat this. If it's not UPMC and it's not Highmark, it's not major medical health insurance. When it comes to under 65, I'm not talking about Medicare. We're talking about under 65. It's you can't if you're not buying it from UPMC and you're not buying it for or Highmark. You buyer beware. Okay, buyer beware. Seven two four four three eight four five nine three. We got about uh, seven minutes left. We can take your calls if you want to call Aaron at the health insurance store. Seven two four six zero three three four zero three, or get your best plan dot com. And something you know, we haven't touched on this uh, today, but it's something we usually talk about: the difference between a Medicare supplement and uh, the Medicare Advantage plans. We, to supplements are really simple, Bill. Medicare is designed, you talked about it, to pay 80% of your outpatient services. Um, Medicare Part A is your hospitalization. It's designed to pay your entire hospitalization except for 1400 bucks, basically. And what a supplement does, a.k.a. Medigap, it comes in and fills those gaps. It's that simple. Um, you know, you can go any doctor or hospital in the country. We know what to expect if you get cancer, you know, God forbid, or if you have a long hospital stay. We know we're not going to get any bills. Or if we do, they're going to be very, very minimum, a couple hundred bucks. Um, uh, they're, they're more expensive generally than Advantage plans, although you wouldn't believe how many people we meet who are paying far more for an Advantage plan than they would be for a supplement and still exposed to, you know, five or six or $7,000 out of their own pocket where they could have a supplement that would cost half of that and wouldn't be responsible for any of those bills. Um, Advantage plans, Medicare does not take on that traditional role where it pays 80%. Medicare is paying to get rid of you, basically. <laughs> In other words, they're paying to, for the bur- for, for another company to take on the burden of providing you your health insurance and paying all, the met- all your bills minus your cost sharing. So there, you're going to have cost sharing for everything from $0 for a primary or 5 bucks for blood work to a couple hundred for uh, outpatient surgery or a CAT scan. Um, to you know, a thousand or so for hospitalizations, to several thousands if you need chemo, you know, expensive chemo, radiation, uh, lengthy skilled nursing facility stay, or other drugs infused in a hospital. I mean, in an outpatient setting, infused or injected in an outpatient setting. Those people have networks. And I want to mention one thing, and I and, and I should talk about this more often. Here's a big difference that we don't talk about, Bill, is how claims get approved, right. and how they get paid. When you have a supplement. Medicare lets the doctor, Eureka, lets yeah. the person who's caring for you, who, who's, who's, who's <laughs> who actually hands on. Right. Let's decide if you need an MRI or CAT scan. Right. If you should stay an extra day or two in the hospital. If you need a surgery or not. If you need uh, therapy or physical therapy or not. If it, and, and the, if the doctor says, Bill, I want you to, you know, I want you to get an MRI, go out in the lobby. Um, you know, if you're at UP, somewhere in UPMC facility, it's go out in the lobby. We'll let the, you know, the, them know upstairs. They'll come down and get you in a few minutes, right. and you get your MRI that day. If you have an Advantage plan, it's we're going to call this into your insurance company. We'll let you know when it's approved, and you can come back in and get it, okay? Um, and I will say that Advantage plans have gotten better about not denying those things. I had somebody in my office, though, a month ago that had to get six weeks of physical therapy before they could get an MRI. Really? Mm-hmm. So, in other words, make sure that we can't put everything back in place before <laughs> we we see what's wrong. Yeah. I uh, had a for good friend of mine. This is not Medicare, but this is just commercial insurance, you know, private insurance. Um, she fought with the company for 12 months to get an MRI. She was in pain. And sure enough, by the time finally she got them to, to give her MRI, she had a terribly – she had a terrible – Disc problem. I was going to say probably put, everything deteriorated. Yeah, it, 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 she needed surgery. They they made her wait a year. Now, if she'd have had Medicare, the doctor would have said, "Go, we're going to get you an MRI right now." Right. And she, the doctor, would have looked and said, "Oh my God, your 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 disc exploded. We're going to get you surgery tomorrow." And it, and it probably would have cost less too, as far as the she, whole. He, she would have paid us. Now, here's the thing about Advance plans. Yeah, lower prices. You get that you get the dental division, you know the dental and vision and the over the counter allowances, which you don't get with supplements. Okay, so you you know you're you're giving up something to get something else. So again, it's a preference. Um, 
you know how you want to how you want to insure yourself. You got to know the pros and cons of each. That's what we do for you at the health insurance store. I'm not saying there's not a place for Advantage plans. We spent you know the first half hour of the show talking about what you should look for in an Advantage plan um, because there's people a who want Advantage plans who like to, the opportunity to save money, like the dental and vision and hearing, and there's people who don't want to deal with. Um, you know, an, an insurance company calling the shots, somebody sitting in the 53rd floor of a skyscraper <laughs> in Pittsburgh saying that you need to leave. You know, they're not going to pay for any more days in the hospital because uh, the stats that that he or she has says that, you know, the length of stay for that diagnosis code is 1.3 days and you've been there, too, and it's time for you to go home. There's some people who don't want to deal with that. OK, so the bottom line is if you come see us, we will make sure. Uh, that we go over those pros and cons, get a feeling for what, what your preferences are, and make sure you wind up in a plan. And we'll remind you of those things. So you can say, I, I have had people who said, oh, I want advantage plan, advantage plan, advantage plan. Then I tell them, well, listen, you know, if you, if you need an MRI, it's got to get authorized. And they say, you know what, I don't want to deal with that. You know what, yeah. I changed my mind. Uh, or vice versa, I thought they wanted a supplement, and then I, I showed them all the, you know, the dental and vision and all that stuff, and the pr- pr- premium difference. They said, "Boy, I thought I was going to take a supplement, but you know what? I'll go ahead and I understand you explained yes. the you explained yeah. the, the 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 pros and cons. I'm willing to take on some of those risks to get some of the rewards, um, but that's that's everybody's got a different personality, Bill, and a different tolerance for those things. And, and that's why you go to Aaron and let him work it out for you. Call him at seven two four six zero three three four zero three or get your ble- best plan. .com. Aaron, have a very good holiday. We will see you in 2021. Yes, we will. I'd like to wish everybody a, a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Thank yeah. you so much, and, and be safe, uh, and have a, have a wonderful Christmas. And uh, thank you, Aaron. Again, we'll talk to you next year. You're on your local station, W266DB, WMBS, Uniontown. <laughs>